So, first of all, thank you very much for coming to see my presentation called uh, The Apache Way, Committed to Apache. Um, so, um, before I start, can I just do a quick survey? How many, do we have any committers in, in the audience? Yeah, over there. And do we have any sort of non-coding sort of contributors or, doesn't it matter if you're a committer or not? Any non-coding people? <laughs> what is that, one and a half? <laughs> Okay, that's my too. Oh yes, okay, that's that's good. That's good. Okay, so um, my presentation today is going to be a, uh, about um, being involved in open source, and also about enjoying what you do in open source, and also recognizing that not all the open source software is around code and coding, and that there are non-coding uh, contributions involved and uh, also maybe sort of looking at you know why people con contribute to open source because it seems a bit crazy really so let me talk about uh, my uh, my agenda today so i've split it into four sections so we've got an introduction where i'll run through uh, some definitions um, i'm going to I've got a section, second section is uh, life at the facility, so, oh, sorry, uh, welcome to our facility. The facility here is the uh, Apache Software Foundation. Um, and then we're going to talk about sort of ward life. Um, we're going to do a summary of uh, run through all the main points that we've talked through. And then I'll open it up for any questions and any comments. So that's going to be the organization of the, the talk today. So let me start. So. Um, I'm going to start with some definitions because definitions are always good because they, they have a common um, understanding for people. So uh, a couple of definitions. So uh, commitment, the use of a legal means to send a person to a mental hospital, insane asylum or psychiatric ward. So anybody fit in that category? Uh, another definition, a willingness to give your time and energy to something that you believe in your time and energy to something you believe in. So you would give your time freely to create something that somebody else would use, somebody that you don't know. You can be working with people you don't know. And you'll do this for free, and you'll do this quite happily. Now, that sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? So maybe these two definitions are linked somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So let's take a look at another couple of definitions. A committer. So this is a term that you hear a lot in open source. So I've taken a couple of definitions. One of the definitions I've taken is from Wikipedia, and the other definition I've taken from the ASF site. Or I've shortened it, because there's some other things in there about having an Apache ID and all this sort of stuff. So, but anyway, let's take a look at them. A committer is an individual who's able to modify the source code of a particular piece of open source software. So being able to modify the source code. And that's the Wikipedia definition. So the Apache definition is a committer is a developer who was given right access to the code repository. So spot the link. Code. Committers linked to being to do something and modify code. Also notice that it doesn't actually mention anything about commitment. It just mentions the code. So one of the things I'd like to sort of mention here is that, you know, being a committer doesn't mean that it's a measure of your commitment. And you don't have to be a committer to show any commitment. You know, it's just, you know, there is no, you don't have to be a committer. You can still be committed to do something. You can give your time willingly to do something and be committed. So one of the things, don't let me just move on. So one of the things I touched on is, you know, is it all about the code? Is it only about the code? Because all the people that are involved in Apache, we willingly give our time, we willingly give our energy to do something. So, you know, I do it, you do it, and we do it. You know, we think it's fine, we enjoy it. So when we contribute to uh, a project, is it only about the code? So Apache, all Apache projects, are software-related ones. So you tend to find that there is a big focus on 
on the code because you know that's that's what it is about it's about maybe coding so sort of generating releases so if you need to generate a release you need to do all the work around generating that release so fixing bugs doing technical reviews creating releases coding so I would say, I, mean, I mentioned, we, we mentioned that there was a whole uh, few uh, committers in this, uh, in this group. So what do you think were the main factors of you being made a committer in your project? Do you think it was to do with your coding contributions? Justin is saying no. <laughs> no? Localization. Localization? Okay, that's something, something new. But I would, I would, uh, so I would say that as a, on a software on software oriented projects then you do you coding does sit, does get quite a big uh, is a big uh, quite a big influence because it the focus is around generating release but in say for example the corporate world where you have uh, you're generating software releases you tend to have a, a team of people where you have developers, you have testers, you have business analysts, you have uh, I don't know, change management people, marketing people, etc. And because you're in a, a corporate situation, you have somebody that will specify the skills that are needed for a specific team. So you have somebody that says, OK, um, we're generating something, so we actually need some testers. So make sure that when we're delivering this project, we have some testers available. So within, within, a, within Apache, it's not that straightforward because the community is quite a, a naturally organized one in the sense that the people that are interested just, just arrive. And the people that just arrive may not be the full balance of what, you're, what you need for your project. So this is why it's interesting to see that uh, you know, we might be missing some of the areas where we need to uh, deliver a, a, a project. So to answer the question, is coding everything? Well, no, coding isn't everything. And I've sort of mentioned a few of the things as well. So non-coding contributions exist, and they are important. And I think sort of listening to some of the other talks on the, on the track today. You know, there's a lot of projects that are really looking for these non-coding contributions. So they're looking for people to help them with their user testing. They're looking for people to do some things on training, to do some things on marketing, on design, on documentation. And one of the areas that I see that's quite interesting as well is around community management. So. And what I mean by community management is around being a facilitator for the community. So where you have uh, groups of people working on things, you may have the user uh, group and also the development group, but also keeping the community uh, uh, in, no, keeping the community informed about what's going on, letting them know what's, what, what they can do, making sure that the information is out there for people to do things and they know what's happening. So there's a lot of uh, tasks around non-coding that, that are really, really important. And I think that sometimes within Apache, we, we struggle to, to get, to fill these, these missing skills. So one of the things I would say is that, you know, as a project, you know, your mailing list really is your doorway to the world and people are looking in at your project via your mailing list. So, you know, if you're, if people, ju not say judge, people look at how you treat people, people look at how welcoming you are. And so looking at your mailing list and the way you welcome uh, contributions and also the way you interact with each other is very, very important. So your user list, I would say is an interesting place to look and to focus on if you're looking to try and gather uh, contributions from non-coders because they will have a different perspective. They probably just need uh, some interest to, to, to uh, be able to contribute. So if your conversations on your lists are 
mainly development ones, then there's nothing that people can add. If you are, have got some ideas or some requirements about what you want to do, then that actually opens a little gap or opens a door for people to say, ah, oh, right, okay, they're looking for this skill. Maybe I can help there. You know, so this sort of thing. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about uh, my history and, uh, and referral. So um, I, my background is in uh, generally sort of corporate projects. So I've worked on um, sort of international projects uh, project teams where we have this organization of specialist skills so you know the project sponsor comes along and we get a tester get a marketing person we get a uh, developer we get all the full range of skills so it's not a problem we, we make sure we have this and we also have quite a, a fixed direction in what we're doing so um, this was something that you know a structured way this is how I I'm used to working so I had never really had any experience in open source before. I, as far as I knew, I hadn't used any open source project. wasn't really sort of bothered about it. Didn't really you know, understand it. And um, somebody came up to me one day and said, uh, "Hey, uh, you do sort of ERP stuff, so enterprise resource planning software. You do sort of ERP stuff." And I said, "Yeah, I do a little bit." And he said, "I." Well, okay, we'll take a look at this. And I sort of, yeah, okay, I'll have a look. And that project that they told me to, to look at was Apache OFBiz. And I thought, I went and had a look at the online demo, because you can do that on the site. I logged in, played around, I thought, this is quite interesting. This looks like the sort of software that I've been implementing from a from corporate center. Hold on. What is this doing here for free? Why are there people building software, spending their time and energy on software, and giving it away for free? What's the catch? There must be some catch. Maybe they were just trying to get people to, to download it, and then later on they were going to charge for it. But, but no, it just seemed to be too good to be true. Yeah. Why would people do this? And this was something that was really quite baffled me because I didn't understand the concept and I didn't understand the business model because it to me it just didn't seem to make sense it seemed a bit crazy so I was sort of you know still quite interested in finding out what what was happening and why people were doing this so I decided to uh, take a look at the ASF, take a look at the project. And I did that by looking at their mailing list, the front door, effectively. So I didn't sign up to the mailing list, but I was just monitoring the mailing list. And I monitored the mailing lists for maybe about sort of six months, six to eight months. Because this was something totally new to me. I've never seen uh, mailing lists before. It was just a different concept. And I sort of thought, hold on, what's happening here? There are people that are really working together, doing stuff, and it doesn't seem too bad. Maybe there's something I can do to help. Because I looked at the, the software and I thought, well, actually, it seems very developer-oriented. And I had a bit of a functional background. I thought, oh, all right, I could, maybe I can help here. And I was monitoring the lists, but I wasn't actually posting anything. So one of the things that projects need to be aware of is that, that they're, OK, they, we know that they're public lists, but there's a lot of people that are on those lists that are just watching. They're not interacting yet. They're deciding whether or not they will take the first step into the project or whether they will take a step back and decide, no, I'm not interested anymore. So the way that you interact on your public list, when, when something goes well, when something doesn't go well, these are being watched by a lot of people, more than the people that are actually active on your list. So you are effectively ambassadors to the world. And I thought, you know, this mailing list thing, it seems to work, I think. I need to write a bit. 
And all these people, and there were a lot of people on those lists, and a lot of the, these people were non-native English speakers, and they were all doing this in English. <laughs> what? Why are they doing that? It's, it's harder for them. So after six months, six to eight months, I decided, OK, right, uh, I'll, I'll make my first post. I had built up enough confidence to make my first post. So I made my first post, and I started from there. But I made that first post. But I didn't understand or know about the Apache way. I didn't understand or know about community. I didn't understand or know about consensus. All I knew was, there's a mailing list. I think I can help. I will post some stuff. And that's all I did. So once I started posting to the lists, I was looking around to see whether or not, you know, how do we start doing stuff? Because, you know, it's who's in charge. I see the terms, you know, project management committee. And I thought, wow, this is, these are the, the, the project managers or these are the project sponsors that are pushing the project forward. That's why it's working so much. The committers, these guys are all the, all the uh, project managers that are working with the contributors to do all this stuff. But when I was actually in there, I started interacting with the community and posting. And I thought, well, what's next? No, hold on, who's the boss? Hold on, there, but there is no boss. There isn't a corporate structure. There isn't a hierarchy of a team like you have in the corporate sense. Everybody is empowered to have a say in what happens. So there's no one in charge, but then everybody is in charge. And to me, that seemed like, well, how can anything get done? It's disorganized chaos. Nothing will get, ever get ever get done, right? Wrong. One of the things that I found was that, you know, people didn't have uh, a, a, a overall big project plan with time limits and descriptions of what deliverables they needed to do. People seemed to look at the project, look at the tasks and say, OK, this is something that needs doing. I'll do that. This is something um, I like doing. I'll do that. I've got an idea to do something. I'll do that. It seemed to be uh, an, something that was quite natural and organic. And how can that work? So it was empowering people to do what they enjoy, to do what they thought would help, and to do what they thought needed doing. So it was empowering the community. And I thought, well, you know, what could I do if I wanted to start using this model as a non-coder? What could I do? So what did I do? I, I thought, well, I, I can see that they're missing some areas around uh, the functional side because it was an app, some different applications. And I will help doing some functional testing just to look at the business flows. I would look at some of the documentation, and I would contribute that back. I would look at the wiki. I would do this. I would do some testing. I would uh, report the things that are not working, et cetera. And so I thought, well, yeah, I can do that. I've chosen something. And I started to get very, very active on the list. And I found that people said, gave me access to various uh, wikis, various confluence spaces, various people I didn't know were trusting me to do things for the project. People that I'd never met, people that I only know from, from what they write were trusting me. Why would they do that? And I was working and being quite active, and I didn't realize that, you know, just doing that was actually earning me merit, because I didn't understand the concept of merit. I didn't understand consensus, didn't talk about your way, merit, didn't understand it. It was just in the project. And I realized that uh, after a while, that, you know, the, I was doing more and more. I was getting on more and more with the community, and they were quite welcoming. They were plus one, Sharon's got an idea, plus one, yep, yep, this is good. And I felt that I was quite independent in the sense that I could do what I wanted to do and enjoy it. And this concept of merit, and I think you've, it's, it's been brought up in quite a few of the presentations today, 
is around doing something that the community values. And by showing that you're valuing non-coding contributions sends a real strong message to the rest of the community. So it's not only just for code. I think it's easier to measure the code because there's patches, there's lines of code. You can look at the source code and see who's contributed to things. But other things that are non-coding, like documentation, like marketing, like uh, uh, testing, etc., they're not so quantifiable. So that could be an issue. So, but the key thing is that it's not just for code. So, who has invisible friends? <laughs> well, I would say everybody has invisible friends. Anybody that is on the uh, mailing list that is dealing with somebody that you have never, ever met, You've, you sign on to a mailing list. How do you know that you're talking to such and such? Have you seen them? Have you met them? Do you know? No. You're trusting that this person that you're talking to is someone, and you know this person only by what they write. You know them by what they write. So it's a, a huge uh, empowering thing in the sense that you've, you're working with someone that has the same goals that's around the project, building a, some software that's going to be used by the community and by other people that we're going to give away, and you're doing it with people that you don't even know and they don't really know you, but they trust you. That is so empowering. And you find that you learn about people or you, you form an idea about people by the way they write and what they write. So you build your personality or a personality for them in your mind. So you do have invisible friends. Um, I was involved with the Apache OFBs. I think I started in uh, 2008. I, was, uh, I, I started uh, my first post. And I didn't actually meet anybody in person from the community until 2014 at one of these Apache Cons, which is why Apache Con is really quite, uh, quite important. And it was really amazing, really, because you saw the name and you thought, oh, that's such and such. It was like meeting an old friend. It was like meeting an old family person, you know? And even here this week, I have seen the names of people that I have seen on the mailing list, and I've never, ever met them. And then I, I've seen them and greeted them like an old friend. And I think that is part of the Apache Way. That's part of this community building that you realize is happening when you're on the mailing list and you're building a, a social network. So the mailing list isn't only about you know, talking about code and talking about um, what you're going to program and what you're going to review. It's actually about social interaction. It's actually about collaboration. And this is the thing that builds the trust. This is the thing, working together towards a common goal. It is absolutely amazing. So the common room. So I call this a common room. So I mentioned before about the structure of the community and in the sense that we had uh, uh, in, in a corporate sense, you have a hierarchy. Uh, so you have your, senior, your uh, project sponsor, senior management, you have your project team, you have your project manager, you have the people in the team, and they have their deliverables that they set out to, uh, to deliver. They have the project, they have a timeline, they have uh, processes, they have the, the rules that they're going to do, and everything is very clear. Everything is quite laid out in form. And because you have that structure, that organized structure there, and you have all the skills you need, it's not a problem. So in a community where people are free to come and go as they please, you find that in software development, you tend to have an, a skewed so it's distribution of developers because developers are the first people that tend to come into a project. They're the ones that are building the, the, the product, they are the ones that are, uh, have the ideas about how they can do things. They are the ones that are creating the releases and, 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 and making sure that the users can actually download and use this, this product. But from a usability side, the users may have some ideas, some input, some, some details that, you know, hey, we've used your software and it would be nice if, or um, 
ah, oh, we didn't like the look of that, or ah, oh, that process doesn't work too well. Because one of the things that I found being involved with uh, Apache OFBs was that although the screens looked, uh, had all the fields you know, there for flows and whatever, but from a usability perspective, I thought, well, actually, it might be nicer if it flowed this way because this seems to be more of a business flow, how a business person would use it. Uh, or this would be more interesting, this, this use case would be more interesting this way, because that's the, the standard way that people do this sort of thing. And that's the sort of input that be, could be quite interesting for a project. Because you have uh, some ideas about how the people think it should work, and then you have the information about how the users actually use it. And to bring those together is where, is where you can add some value. And for a Apache project, that's where you can also bring in the people that may be not so uh, developer oriented, but more on the usability side and more on the, the, the areas where you, you are not, uh, you, you're not, not so strong. So when I, when I uh, started looking at uh, the, the community and the chaos, and I thought it was informal chaos, but it was, it was fine, and I found I had to adapt to working in a different way. And one of the things that I realized, um, one of the things I expected actually was that there was this hierarchy, the same corporate hierarchy in Apache, but there wasn't. And this, this uh, the, the titles of committer and PMC member and ASF member was, was not like a promotion structure uh, as you have in corporate. It was just a recognition of merit. And so the key thing that I found, uh, I realized was, it wasn't a hierarchy, it's a community. On the mailing list, everybody is a contributor. Everybody is a contributor. It's not that I'm a committer and I'm telling you as a contributor, you can't do that. Or I'm a PMC member and I'm telling you as a uh, commi committer, you, you must do this. It's not that. It's not that. Everybody is a contributor. Everybody is has a responsibility for the welfare of the community. Everybody has a common goal. And that was the key. And this, this uh, section is called escape attempts. So um, when you look at uh, open source communities, people leave. It's, there are various reasons, but people leave. And there are... Uh, the first reason I will, I'll talk about is, is the natural cycle, because sometimes people, people will come on to a project and they, then they naturally leave. For example, I think they have you know, students come on during Google Summer of Code, or people join a project to uh, implement some sort of functionality, or they're at an employer that's contributing to an open source project, and they change job and they no longer contribute, so they leave. So that's a fairly natural cycle. Other reasons that people leave is that it's not a good fit for them. So maybe they uh, are used to doing something in a particular way and they don't really want to adjust. Or if they do try and adjust, it causes some, some frustration. Um, I know that when I started with uh, Apache, the mailing list was a real big adjustment for me because I had not had that, uh, that sort of interaction before. And so, but I chose to adjust. I said, right, okay, I think this is worth doing, and I will do it. So I adjusted to uh, the bailing list. So this is, this is, if it's not a good fit for some people, some people will want to leave. Another reason why people may want to leave uh, open source or Apache community is around conflict, where they don't get on, or they have disagreements, etc. And I think when you have a group of diverse people together, you are guaranteed, 100% guaranteed, to get disagreement. There's no way around it. You'll know that everybody's not going to agree on everything. So, you, the, but the, way, the thing about it is that the way that you manage the disagreement will decide whether or not it becomes a battle, an open, open warfare, or a battle. And if it becomes personal, where people are afraid to, uh, to, 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 uh, um, to step down from a point that they've made because they think it would reflect on their status, they think it re would reflect on them personally very, very badly, 
And this is something that is really, really, um, we need to be really, really careful about because if people are doing something that they have put a lot of emotion into, then they are, they can get defensive about something because they own it. They feel like it's, it, you know, this is my thing, this is my thing that I, I created and you don't understand it and I know that it's right. And so it's, it, it becomes an emotional thing. So we just need to be careful about this. The, the main thing to remember is that we want the community to endure. This is the key thing about Apache and communities. We want the community to endure into the future. And I know that, you know, uh, I, won't, I may not be around in, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, but I would like my project or the projects that I'm involved in to be around. So therefore, I need to work today to help to bring people into the project that will be there in 10 or 20 or whatever years, or they will bring people in to be there in 10 or 20 years. So it's, we want the project to exist into the future, so we need to make sure that we continually look for sort of caretakers, maintainers of the software. So I'm just going to talk quickly about some treatment plans. So the two cases that um, I've, I've highlighted here are around conflicts, because I mentioned conflict in the previous slide. So one of the things about conflict is that it's something that can escalate quite quickly, and it can become quite negative sometimes if we don't resolve it. And it, for me, it's always been about trying to take the emotion out of it and trying to make sure that you understand the reasons for the conflict. If it's an idea about particular code, is it an idea about a strategy? Is it an idea about um, being able to promote the project? What is the reasoning behind the, the conflict? And we find that the, at sometimes that the, the conflict has become a conflict because it, it becomes personalized. If we look at the project as a, an entity and say, right, okay, we're concerned with the welfare of the project. We want the project to, we want to do the best, our very best for the project. What can we do that is the very best for the project? And the question is, you know, are you doing what you're doing for you or are you doing what you're doing for the project, for the best of the project? And this is where I think you can find some answers to conflict in the sense that people may need to sort of step back and say, well, actually, maybe I was doing that because it was, I was too close to it. It was my personal idea and I feel that I need to defend something. And maybe it, maybe it wasn't in the, right, the best interests of the project. And that, if you start from that common ground, I think this is a, at least a stepping stone to re resolving it. So we're all in it together. And the second top area that I, I wanted to highlight is to where to find new companions. So how do you recruit people into, you, into, your, into your project? And I find for, for our project, it's, it's the user list. It's the, the user list. I know that um, we, we have uh, a lot of uh, service companies, et cetera, that monitor our dev, dev list, but we have a lot of people, a lot of users that are sitting on our, on our user list that maybe don't post or post very rarely. And so trying to involve them, trying to communicate with them, trying to show them where the, pro where the project is, is wanting to go and what we think is important, this is where we can try and get some, some feedback from people and make sure that they're, they're encouraged to participate. So sometimes we find that people are uh, saying, hey, I'd like to do something, and people are encouraged to do proof of, uh, proof of concept. You know, go away and uh, go and do something and come back and we'll have a look at it. And then people get that, po that first positive reaction and they're motivated to go and they're sort of, you know, energized to sort of do something. And they go away and go and do something and they come back. And they come back really, really quickly. Oh, yes, we've done this. Here it is. Ah, oh, right, okay. Um, have you thought about doing this? We could, that looks good, that looks good. Maybe we can... And then all of a sudden you find that you're pulling in various people from the community. That, oh, I, was, I did some stuff on that. I did some stuff on that. Maybe we can do something together. And straight away, you've got a bit of a synergy. And that really, really helps. That really, really helps. So this is the treatment plan. 
So I'm going to, uh, so, so if we take a look at the symptoms, so I just wanted to see where you, for, I mean, we've got quite a few people in, in here that are committers already, so, but I, I think it would be interesting questions as well. So if you're, you know, where are you? Are you already involved in open source or are you still looking at it from the outside? Are you still not sure whether or not you want to get involved with an Apache project? Maybe you're a user at the moment and you're here at ApacheCon to find out a bit more about Apache and how it all works. You know, are you monitoring any existing lists at the moment? Are you watching a, a community? You know, you know, are you already inside a community? Are you already a contributor or in a community, but you're not sure what you want to work on? You're not sure what to do next? Or maybe you found something that you want to work on, but you're you, you're not sure about how to post straight post to the, to the list and think, oh, maybe they won't want what I want. You know, have, you know, have you started doing things that you already enjoy and you think that will be really, really beneficial for the project? Or maybe, you know, you've, you're frustrated in the project and you're, you've, you're finding you're conflicted and you're not sure whether or not you want to stay. No. Have you worked with the community? Are you realizing that you, know, you have a responsibility as part of the community to look after the welfare of that project? So where are you? Think about where you are in your open source journey. So I will do my summary diagnosis. So just a bit of a review. So commitment. OK, we're not committed to a mental institution yet. But we are giving our time and energy doing something that we believe in. That's what we're doing. Every day, we're doing this. We're helping our project by doing things that the community values. This is merit. This is where you gain merit. Doing something the community values. We also have a responsibility for looking after our community, for making sure that our community will endure, for looking after the code, for looking after the community and the project, but not only the code. We also have a, a responsibility to our users and our developers to, to bring them together, to create a vibrant and diverse community. So I would say, you know, if you have all of these, then you're definitely committed. So, thank you for your listening. So I don't know. So do do I have any questions? Does anybody have any questions or comments, even or alternative diagnoses? No. Nope. <laughs> No worries. Okay, thank you very much, everybody.